Hey, what's up everybody? It's CrossCurrent. Today I'm showing you a game called For the King. Now today I'll be doing a guide on the game and a little bit of a review just to kind of get you a feel for what's in store. Now, in the store, you would go to Epic Games Launcher and download this. If you go to Steam, it's $20, but there it is free for now. How long that'll be, you gotta look up for yourself. But I gotta say, the game is a lot of fun. What I spend money on it is... Eh, I don't know how much I'd spend. It's good and it's fun, and it's great to get people to play together. Now, the game can normally be played with one person, but you'd have to control three characters, or, well, two to three characters. If you do less, it's not going to work well at all. Uh, they have different modes in it as well. So if you're going to create a new game, you have all the expansions given to you. Five expansions, one main mode, really a lot of fun. If you're just starting out though, I would suggest going to Hildebrandt Cellar. A long-term player had suggested this to me, and it is great because you can go through dungeon and dungeon, and you just have a bunch of combat, maybe a little bit of shop, a little bit of teamwork, but it's nothing too extensive. It allows you to just kind of learn the basics of that before you go into the game and learn all the other complicated stuff. And by the way, chat, if I miss anything, let me know in the comments below, please. Don't look to insult me. I'm trying to learn this game a little bit too. I've had it for about a week, but I do know the game pretty well also. I just want to make sure you guys get the gist if you've never heard of this game before. And get it before time runs out. Because who wants to pay 20 bucks when you can pay nothing? Alright, so, that being said, the main mode is for the king. So that's the mode that you want to play almost all the time, and the reason is, it'll unlock things in the store. Now, the lore store is where you can unlock things to add to the game, including customizations, locations, characters, items, all mini encounters, all of that. Now, just to give you a brief rundown, the character customization has nothing to do with statistics. It is just to make you look cool. Now, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to make you look cool. Like that, you have to get to the 90th floor of uh, Hildebrand Cellar. So that's the thing, they have a lot of stuff that you have to earn. So you unlock them by getting to a certain point in the game or doing something. But then to buy them you have to get lore books, which are shown up here. That's earned from finishing certain bosses off, treasure chests, etc. So when you're done with games you can either save and exit, or you can exit entirely when you hop back on purchase stuff. Now, mini encounters, they have stuff like a uh, I don't know, there's a person who gives you a better pipe, I'll explain the helpful usefulness of that. Traveling healer, trainer, lots of stuff, they will pop up on the map randomly when you're walking around. The items, they then get sent into the inventories of enemies, or your inventory, or they can be dropped, bought at vendors, etc. There's a lot of items, and the more you pay, typically the better they are. Like, this sword is phenomenal! If I have gameplay of that, I will show you insanity. The characters, now you do have a lot of characters to start with. I believe there's three or four to start with, but then you can also unlock other characters. Now, I have not unlocked all of them yet. There's still the monk, treasure hunter, and something else. The treasure hunter is one you can obtain, obtain in the uh, Into the Deep campaign. You have to finish it completely and go to the bottom of a whale or something like that to achieve him and these guys have a bunch of different perks like treasure hunter you can open chests and no matter what they won't be cursed uh, the woodcutter is a better blacksmith and has different abilities herbalist can collect herbs which is extremely helpful because those give you healing and they help remove problems buster can earn you gold over the time trapper is there to mainly destroy traps but can also hit pretty hard. Uh, so yeah, those are the characters. I'll go over them in another video, just kind of give you a ranking on which I prefer and which are not as good. Now, locations. Once you unlock these, they'll show up in specific spots on the map. And although the map is different every time you start the game by a little bit, they're still generally in the same spot. Uh, so example, the Kraken Ward will allow you to be on sea, and keep the Kraken away from you. Now, people say the Kraken never happens. It happens. Be careful. 
first time I went on the ocean, we went like four spaces to attack a ship. Before we got to the ship, Kraken spawned. Now the Kraken in the center head has 300 health, the tentacles have 100 health apiece, and there's about five of them. We basically died very quickly. So, yeah, this thing is huge. Yeah, lots of this stuff is really cool. And now I'm just going to show you a little bit of the gameplay. I'm just going to go with For the King. I'm doing Apprentice mode so I can make it very basic and simple for you. Solo Adventures, mainly what you want to do. If you want to do online co-op, I would suggest going to their Discord. The best way to do that is to just look up For the King Discord. The link on the bottom right does not work for whatever reason. At least not for me. Maybe it does for Steam users, but... Or whatever. If you do also want to start the game, you can uh, switch around the frequencies and all that to make it easier. But if you make it easier, the lower payout will be lower. It's like uh, if you want the frequency to be nothing and you want to have more life, you get less lore, which we'll use in the store. <sighs> yeah, the economic, econ economic economy inflation. That'll just increase over time, like when you get more levels and more time happens, things will cost more, maybe more. You can reduce that, but again, you'll lose your payout. You can increase it and you'll earn more, but honestly, it's better not to tamper, tamper with that. Just play the game, it's Apprentice, it's not that bad. Alright, so now all the other characters. I'm just going to go one by one and describe what they do. So the Scholar? is it's like a basic mage you have magical magical attacks as well as potentially healing when you start the game you want to look for a staff that has party heal because believe me having a heal rather than having to consume healing stuff will keep everyone alive a lot longer now you can also check the class information up here and it will show those statistics on weapons so if you have a weapon that's like i don't know a huge axe is probably strained uh, wand will probably be the brain, which is intelligence, etc. So that just determines your chance of hitting. Maybe it can determine some damage. I haven't noticed that yet. Uh, each character does have a passive skill. So the passive skill of refocus gives you one more focus, which I can describe later when you learn what focus is. Uh, you also, also shows you the starting equipment right there. Uh, but the Scholar is a very good character to have at least one of. If you don't have the Scholar, then hopefully someone has an Herbalist. Having a team heal is essential to moving on. Now, there is also the Minstrel. The Minstrel is basically like a bard. Um, it has the class ability of two passive class abilities of Inspire and Encourage. Inspire means when you stop your turn, it could possibly give you or anyone around you experience for free. Encourage allows you to give someone an extra attack slot on an enemy. Attack slots are what you ever use in combat. If it shows a weapon, it shows four of those hexagons. That means each time you're going to roll at the percentage of your weapons aim for each of those. So let's say it says 76 will be 76% chance for 1, 2, 3, 4. Up above it'll say the chance of getting perfect, which is typically, if it's 76, it'll probably be about 30%. Something around that. This is 70% four times. Uh, these characters use a simple loot, and no, it's not just to play music, it does magical damage to enemies. If you ever are wondering why your damage on your damage isn't so high against enemies. If you're doing magical and they have a purple shield, that will determine that they have resistance. If it is a blue shield, that determines that they have armor. Physical against armor gets blocked. Magical against resistance gets blocked. Alright, the next character we could talk about is the blacksmith. The blacksmith is like a warrior. It's kind of like a tank as well. It has a bunch of... It, you basically use a shield and you use a heavy weapon and you, you know, you hit things. It has very good strength, has very good vitality, a little bit of talent too. Everything else is pretty garbage though. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. It's good early on, later on though, when things start having more magical power, this character is going to get trucked. Just completely destroyed by all those mages. Uh, the passive ability, Steady. 
Um, it's actually, well, steadfast. I don't know why it says steady. In battle, if an enemy attacks you and your ability goes off, it removes all damage or effects from the attack. It's basically a complete dodge. It's amazing. Uh, Blacksmith is very good to try early on. It has a bunch of good equipment to start off with. Uh, if you're ever looking to get through a locked door, having a blacksmith or woodcutter is good. They can just smash through the door, and they have increased chance of that, since it is a strength trap. Traps have all those modifiers as well. Now, the hunter. The hunter is basically like your assassin slash archer slash whatever you want to call it. Guy who shoots arrows really fast, is easy to hit with, but doesn't have a lot of health, doesn't have a lot of damage. You know. So basically with the hunter you want to dodge and you want to make sure you're not missing. Maybe get something penetration would be amazing so you can go through their armor. Now you have the elite sneak ability which allows you to sneak past enemies very easily as well as possibly ambush enemies easily. If you do an ambush and you fail, that is not successful. They will attack before you. If you succeed, you attack before them. Elite trap evasion allows you to Evade traps better. I think that's pretty well stated. Uh, energy boost. I am not entirely sure about that one. I haven't noticed any benefit from it. I, if I were to take a gander, it means that something from focus is increased or your movement around the map is increased. Call shot. It's basically like you get a critical and you automatically hit the target for damage. Loot's also not too terrible. I believe that is all the basic classes, guys. I'm just going to play one with all the basic stuff right now. If you want to see any of the other stuff in the future, be sure to watch my other videos. I'll be making some about the extended classes. Now, if you're wondering about the names, these are just three account names that I've had ages past. And, I don't know, they're kind of funny. Cross current thief, fade and told. Old usernames that everyone I know. Okay, let's start it. Now, I could read these guys for you, but I think it's more fun if you read it for yourself. I don't want to spoil it that much for you. It will give you a guide and a starting quest right off the bat. And it's nothing too ridiculous to my knowledge. Okay, so you're now in the game. You made it to that first step of going out there and testing what you know. Each round, you'll roll for your movement. You can get up to 5 at the start, unless you have some sort of weird character that has less or more. Uh, you can also earn more if it's a nice day or something specifically unique happens. Uh, sometimes your turns can get skipped, but most of the time you have movement. Now let's talk about the main towns. All the towns that have like a name like Orton or Woodsmoke or something that looks just like that, they will have quests a market and services. If you see a house that's blue, like one little roof, that's for going on the water. They'll have everything for boats. But let's go here. Market. If you're looking in the market, the best things you can look for is getting your scholar a pipe and or giving him some sort of way to heal everybody, as well as God's beard. Now God's beard is amazing because it is the one item that heals the most in the game. There are other things that can heal more, but oh my goodness, they're so hard to find, especially without the lore in the game. So early game, you want to look for that. Afterwards, I would say probably look for things like Hagsbane, Panax. Those will help prevent bleeding and status effects. Curses do not go away after battles, so that's why you get Hagsbane. Uh, the Panax you'll see later. Basically, it removes stuff that could hurt you during the battle, but poison goes after battle so that's another thing to keep in mind now when it comes to weapons those are good to get but you mainly want to survive early on and you'll pick up drops from enemies whether it be from quests or from just luck a uh, quest board you want to make sure you're always doing a quest when you go somewhere new it'll give you a great amount of bonus now reducing chaos so chaos there's three chaos levels to the left of you and uh, perils and challenges will pop up when you get chaos. Now, I've only had to get to one chaos because I'm smart and I don't want it to hit two. The first chaos level means that all enemies have an additional 105% health 
and other stuff I didn't bother to read because it is very scary. So, if ever you see something reduced chaos, it's pretty good to go for. I could also get a hook sword, which would probably go to the blacksmith and get 30 gold or 22 gold, right? Stuff's cool, but it's not insane. I would accept the one to reduce the chaos, and that's a long ways to go. That's going to be fun. Kill the Chaos Acolyte in the Guardian Forest. Alright. Um, to pass around gold, you can do it as long as they're within one or two spaces of you. And to do so, you just you know you click on the gold. You click how much you want to give. You give it. Boom. Over there. Typically, give it all to the Scholar because he's going to have to get his stuff to help out everybody. If you're trying to buy pipes for another person, it will not work. It'll instead buy a pipe for you. Which is probably not what you want. When you end your turn, though, be sure to hit the sundial on the top right. Otherwise, it will not end the turn. There is a way, somehow, some way, to automatically end your turns, but I feel like that is a strategical error. Because if you want to pass something around, you then cannot. And more times, most of the time, I feel like I do want to pass stuff around. Alright, so when you're looking at to attack an enemy, first, See what you're trying to do. Are you trying to ambush them? Could I ambush them? Yes, but I don't want to. Could I sneak past them? That's basically all I'd be used for is sneaking. You can't sneak and then fight them again. It would then start this all over again. You can retreat, which typically is something you can do without any sort of roll. You just automatically get it. Now, with fighting, you want to make sure that all three characters on the left side are there. Otherwise, it'll just be the people on the left side that fight. So if you're too far away from your party, you'll be fighting stuff alone, and you'll normally be more than one enemy, especially at higher level than zero. Now, for focus, that I was going to talk about, that is the bar above your character. So like those four little uh, hexagonal gold things, shapes, I can't think of the word. Basically, you can use those for attack rolls or anything. You can even pop them on your character by right-clicking to get an extra movement. Now, what's the use of that in this scenario? You can use it to increase your chances. If you want to remove that, you can then move to the next option. So 57% success goes to 86% success, and now we ambush them. Had I not ambushed, the fairy would have in for sure gone before me. Fairies have a lot of attack. A lot of speed, not a lot of attack, not a lot of health. Sometimes I have some magic too. Attack. Now, archers or hunters are really good against flying units, so that's a little thing to keep in mind. Ooh, look at that. So, that's a piece of armor. It's basically like some sort of pendant. It puts in the ring slot because it's not going to take a lot of space on my character. Uh, we'll give that to. Uh, the healer needs to stay alive. Okay, so something I forgot to mention is the inventory. To go to your inventory, you click on that satchel on your character. And you can look all your information, what kind of armor you have. Uh, all your attributes, gold. And it has little categories for it too. Now, if you want to give something to now, let's say you want to give this hermit grass to your scholar. If I was close enough, I could. Like, now I probably can. Hermit grass. Give to him. Boom. He's got it now. Now, if you want to use something, you simply click on it. But if you're trying to give it, do not hit the inventory right here. Otherwise, it will use it. You don't want to do that. You're going to go that way. Make sure it works. Now, Golden Root is one of the things I have in my inventory. It is pretty helpful as well. It will give three focus, which is essential. But if you have a higher pipe level, it will give you more focus than that. Uh, the Tinder Pouch is used for healing you up, and allies can go there for free, and it has a total of 8 turns to stay there, and you can restore your focus, or restore your health. It's really helpful. Don't waste them if you can help it, but if there's a lot of enemies around, and you're trying to kill them all, play it tent. Play it safe. Alright, so there we go, we're done with that guy, and my turn. Alright, so this guy, he can go to the market, he can buy the pipe, and now, originally, I would be, 
earning 15 hit points, uh, all that's and all those other mechanics increase. Now, the fact that he's a healer, if he has a higher pike, he'll heal everyone for 30 instead of 15. So it's really good to spread the healing out to one person and to have a healer. We'll equip that. And those shoes are nice, but you compare it to my old ones, and it's really not that much better. Now, something I didn't mention in the game, luck. Luck doesn't really affect a whole lot in this game. It is helpful, but it's not something that's super insane. It can be. It's just kind of like a wild card. All right. See, now some characters are not good at ambushing, so be sure you check the percentages and keep in mind that it could turn around bad. There are three enemies. I don't want to ambush them. I'd rather just attack them at this point. Now, if you're looking at your characters, you see that there is the armor, the resistance, and evasion right there. So if you're ever curious on why you're getting hit so much, that might be why. Uh, the experience is down here as well. Uh, if you want to see our statistics, it's got a little sidebar right there also. So just be sure you're checking your inventory, checking your character banners, everything. It can really save you in a battle. Now the best way to help you in a battle is to look for what attacks can be removed. So like, right there when I attack the bee, I let both those crows attack. If I kill the crow, then one last one less unit would be attacking me because it would be dead before it got to. Now, I mean, it still helps that the bee is dead. It probably would have attacked after I do this. But it's not as effective as if I got rid of it already. And thus the battle ends. Share. It's good to share the gold, especially if you don't know people. Otherwise, they'll probably think you're a selfish jerk and they'll leave. The screen will look a little differently because it'll be different players. So when it says ready, instead of one person having it ready and you can choose for them, everyone chooses for themselves. Alright, so I went to Wood Smoke. Some kind of questing happens. If you want to look at your quests, the, t the main quests are on the top right, and the side quests are on the top left. Uh, if you finish the main quest, typically Hildebrandt will say something, and you'll know they're moving forward. Now, if you're ever lost on where you need to go for an objective, you can click on the text of the quest, and it'll tell you where to go. Now, uh, sometimes it won't, and if it doesn't, in a certain mode, there's one where, like, it didn't show me exactly where to go. All these yellow spaces with question marks on them, that means you haven't explored yet, and something could pop up there. So, keep that in mind. If you're completely lost, have no idea what to do, go over the question mark spaces. It'll save you. Alright, Cult Device. Gotta get rid of this. Probably, for these, it's good to use Focus, because... Oh, well, never mind. That one's easier than normal. It's us. Now I can get rid of chaos, or, well, I've already got a quest to remove chaos, so we can gain a life. Well, oof, never mind. Feels bad. So, chaos can get removed, but I don't believe it gets removed past what you see. Otherwise, that would be amazing. So, me getting that quest from Orton that says. To remove chaos is basically useless now. Keep that in mind, guys. I think all the storylines will probably be the same. Ah, an ambush. So sometimes when these ambushes catch you, you have to fight them and you can't retreat, you can't do anything, and it makes a 1v3. So stay with your party. Otherwise, this could be a much worse fight. Despite ambush, it will rank you based off of your speed on who goes first, second, third, fourth. 
You're gonna just fight like you normally do. By the way, guys, if there is any gameplay you would like to see from this game, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me. On my other guide videos, I've had thousands of views and not a single person has subscribed from them. At least not until I made other videos down the road. So, please, these videos take a lot of time to make. Time and effort. But, uh, I appreciate you all for watching. Please drop a like. Share. Anything will help. Got some more gold. Uh, I will try to make a guide about intermediate gameplay. So you can know it's just kind of how far, how things look down the road. I also have many clips of gameplay as well, just so you can see what there is to offer. Now, I do believe I've gone over all the basics in this mode. If there's anything you think that I missed, I'll try to bring up in the next video and make it up to you guys. But for those who have been here the whole time, deeply thank you for watching my video. I appreciate every one of you, and I can't wait to see you next time.